So I've been thinking a lot over these years about public education, and um, this this starts with a kind of prelude, which is the the CAP program, which I'm the co-director of here, has been uh, a cooperative program between Kenyon and a bunch of high schools, where we try to work with high school teachers to teach them to teach Kenyan level courses in the schools for Kenyan credit. And I've always wanted to extend that program and was fairly successful at it to public schools. And so we have uh, maybe 15 urban public school partners, Cleveland and Columbus. Um, and what I've seen over the years is a very sad decline in the way in which the public schools are run, the way in which the public response to them has, has declined, and the way in which funding formulas are uh, inequitable. And so what's happened to my mind is a kind of abandonment of one of the cornerstones of what a democratic society needs to function. So at the, at the time when we ideologically trumpet the notion of the United States as the bastion of democratic values and principles, and we're even having a conference here about whether we should sell democracy abroad, we're in fact undermining one of the institutions that's key to a dem democracy, which is free public access to education for the, the population. And when we do that, when we abandon those people, and that's what we've really done, we've abandoned 60% of kids who live in cities, mostly non-white, many more kids who live in uh, the rural countryside, when we abandon those children, as a democracy, what we do is we lose, we lose the potential genius. We lose all those minds that we no longer will have any ability to stimulate to become the next whatever it is that one could hope that they would become. And I think this is a very sad state of affairs. And, and what gets me, I think, angry and frustrated is the idea that the, the fault of all of this lies in the teachers. That somehow the teachers are responsible for declining performance on the part of kids in public school, whereas in fact they have been abandoned, I'll use that word again, financially, physically, by the public, by the state, by the government, by funding formulas, by all kinds of things, by legislatures. So that teachers I know really well, who are wonderful teachers in schools in the Cleveland, in Cleveland, in the Cleveland Municipal School District, have classes of 55 students. And they're now going to be held responsible for those kids' performances on standardized tests as a way of evaluating what kind of teachers they are. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. If you don't have equal funding in schools, how can you have equal measurement of student performances? And if teachers are burdened by that kind of incredible um, outsized student-teacher ratio, uh, it's just a disaster for them. So um, I don't know what the answer is, but I do believe that uh, charter schools, some, which are in effect public private corporations, uh, which are taking public money to fund alternative schools rather than keeping the money in the public school system. Um, that that's one issue that's, that's really powerfully important. That the whole thrust of what's so-called the so-called contemporary educational reform movement, based on testing, charters, uh, teacher accountability, is just actually taking a difficult problem and making it worse. And uh, I don't hear this voice, my voice, out there very often. Um, and I wish I did because I'm not an expert on this on the level of uh, someone who could be a spokesperson on this. There is a, a, a writer named Diane Ravitch uh, who does seem to understand this, and she's a very good education writer, um, importantly. But, but how do we, as a society, support, sustain, nurture, nourish, educate the masses of non-white urban children in this society rather than just leave them at the wayside. <laughs>
and I and again, like like I said a few minutes ago, I think that's that's what this notion of abandonment is, has been. We are all put in this terrible position of triage, of rather than solving the problem, we save the few. And I think we all need to think about what the implications of that are for the future.